Okay, I want to look at this example. Guided problem 11.4, it's in the bank. Okay? So it says here, <clears throat> highway curves are often banked. What does bank mean? It means they're, they're raised, they're inclined. There's an inclination angle here. It's not uh, horizontal, but there's a banking angle. So these highway curves are often banked to reduce a vehicle's reliance on friction when negotiating a turn. On a banked curve, there is a centripetal component of normal force acting on the vehicle. All right? When the angle and speed are such that the friction plays no role in a vehicle's motion in the curve, the nature of the road surface is immaterial and thus the posted speed limit applies in both wet and dry weather. Suppose the posted speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour on a curve of radius 180 meters. At what angle theta to the horizontal should the curve be banked so that reliance on friction is not necessary? Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, so I've got the question there again. Um, I just want us to to look here. I've got another picture down here, which I want us to look at eventually. Um, uh, this is a car going around a banked angle, uh, a, a banked road. Okay, why do they do this? Okay, so I'll try my best to explain. So say now you've got, um, say now you've you've got a a car driving on a on a circular track and there's our car okay just use your imagination okay so there's the car on the on the uh, on the road there's your axis of rotation okay so well let's make the road like that okay so the car is on the road and if you look at it straight ahead it's going to be horizontal so it's driving that is the tangential direction okay and that is the z direction okay now um, we know that this guy is going around the bend and so we know that because there's curvilinear motion there is acceleration towards the center acceleration that's right it's your acceleration equal to v squared over over r so your acceleration your tangential uh, not your tangential your centripetal acceleration towards the center is given by this all right and so this is based on two things it's based on the speed and it's based on the radius okay now what are the forces in this specific case that are causing this acceleration. Remember, f you need a force to cause this centripetal acceleration. So if we, if we say that this is our, um, our radial direction, and that is our z direction, or our normal direction, then we say some of the forces in the radial direction is m a radial. Okay? And this, m V, we have mv squared over r. This, this radial acceleration is v squared over r. Okay? But now what is the force causing this, this um, object with inertia m to accelerate like this? The only force in this situation is friction force. So we're going to have, if we look at this, let's draw the free body diagram. You've got your normal force. You've got your gravitational force, and you're going to have your friction force. Now, your friction force is the only force that is causing this acceleration. So we're going to have your Fs. Your friction force is equal to mv squared over r. Okay, so now the point is this. If you're going around a bend with a certain velocity and it has a certain radius, and it's flat, it's flat like that, then the only force that is causing this um, acceleration is your friction force. Okay? So all, all of the, all of the fo 
friction force is used to cause this acceleration. But now why do, why do we do this? Why, um, why do we have these banking angles? Okay, so if we consider again the situation, but instead of being on a flat surface, you're going around a bend at, a, at an inclined angle, theta. Okay, so there's the object again. Now, if we require exactly the same acceleration, v squared over r, or rather, if we're going at ex exactly the same velocity, and we have exactly the same radius, then the force required to accelerate it is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be mv squared over r. But now let us consider our force diagram. So we know that we're going to have a normal force here. We're going to have a friction force, Fs, why is it acting down? Because as you're going around a bend on an incline, the car wants to slide out. Okay? So in order for to stop it from sliding out, the friction force is actually acting down. And then we've also got gravity, the gravitational force that's acting down. But remember, the acceleration is in this direction. So if we rewrite, if we rewrite our sum of the forces in the radial is equal to mv squared over r. Remember, this is identical to the previous case. But now, let's look at, the, at how the forces contribute now. If this is theta, then that is theta. And, of course, that will be theta. So now, look here. Fs, not all of the force comes from Fs. Not all of the force required for this acceleration comes from Fs. Only Fs cos theta um, is the component and we have plus F normal sine theta is equal to mv squared over r. So now, uh, let's use another color over here. Now we have both this, this guy's component in the radial direction plus this guy's component in the radial direction. So less is required of friction in order to cause this acceleration. Okay? Because the normal force also contributes to that force that you need to accelerate it in the uh, in the uh, radial direction. And so actually, for a given speed and a given radius, you could keep changing this angle until you do not require friction any longer for a specific f uh, speed and a specific radius. So that all that you need is your normal force. So the only thing that we're looking at is the normal force and the component of the normal force along this direction is sufficient to cause the, the acceleration that you need. So in the end we will just have this. For a given speed, a given radius, we keep changing the angle until we see we don't need friction anymore and this component is sufficient. Okay? All right. So now, let's go back to the actual question. So now, the, the question is, at what angle theta to the horizontal should the curve be banked so that the reliance on friction is not necessary? So again, if we've got the car here, then all we, all we have is Fn, we have Fg. By the way, um, this, this gravitational force is perpendicular there. So it, has, it plays no role in this uh, radial direction. Okay. All right. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop now and then I'm going to do this part two of this guided problem, okay?